McLaren is off to a very bad start of the 2023 season, and while they were able to rack up a decent P6 finish with Lando Norris, and Piastri was able to score his first career points on his home turf, it's definitely not what the team wants to have as they're headed further down the road. Lando Norris has spoken up about McLaren's issues yet again, and it seems like things have reached a point of no return. The young Briton will be finally ready to move on and go to a championship team, as it seems likely there is only so much McLaren can offer him after the latest statements from the team. Lando Norris has been able to outperform Daniel Ricciardo in the previous two years, and so far he's been the superstar of the one-man show that's been going on in the Woking Bay squad in this gruesome period. Norris had the opportunity to leave the team after the 2020 season, but he chose to give trust to the team that picked him back up in 2019 now it seems like this is backfiring on him heavily. One thing that Norris isn't particularly happy with is how Piastri has been handling the MCL 60. Although Norris finished better in Australia, Piastri was the one that was able to bring the car in Q3 in Jeddah, and in all three races, the race pace that was presented by the Australian wasn't that bad at all for a rookie. So, with Norris feeling endangered and more pushed by Piastri than he was by Ricardo, as he mentioned, and with so many teams having available spots in the following years, could we finally see Norris competing for a championship? It's not that he doesn't have the potential to beat Piastri using the same machinery, it's the fact that the motivation is pretty much non-existent at this point. Norris isn't happy at McLaren, and he's been letting everyone know that, thanks to his statement in the form of the car isn't performing well, or you have until 2025 to build me a championship winning car. That's something very fair from his side, and the last thing you'd want is to waste your talent on a team that doesn't have any future plans whatsoever for you. And we must mention that it took 8 cars to not finish the race so that McLaren would be able to finish with both of its cars in the point. So that itself is a bit of a depressing fact that the team needs to accept. Sure, surviving the carnage is the most important thing in situations like this, but you cannot always hope for a carnage and you cannot always hope that you'll be the survivor. And one thing is for sure, Norris knows this better than anybody else. While we're desperately waiting to see the upgrades that McLaren will bring to Baku and Imola, and while we cannot wait to see what benefits the team will reap from their new wind tunnels, the situation has gotten to the point where these changes may be arriving a bit too late. Norris has pinpointed yet another weakness of the car that is holding his performance locked, and when talking about this new problem, the young Briton added, I was sort of shocked at how bad we are with DRS and how draggy we are when we open the DRS. We gain, I guess, a few kilometers per hour, but some of the other car gains 10 to 15. It's a different ballpark to us. Saturdays are our biggest weakness for us at the minute, especially because we poor DRS. It's not in our favor in any way. We understand it and we're working hard to try and figure out how to make it better and more efficient, but it'll be a while before we can improve that. We're trying, but it's difficult when it's so tough on Sunday. It makes our life hard on Sunday. Sunday, unfortunately for McLaren, is when the points count. And as of now, McLaren hasn't been able to count as many points as they would like to. Sure, Alpine is having their fair share of troubles, and both of their cars crashed into each other at the last race, but in terms of race pace, at least the Endstone based squad is able to be competitive with the midfield. As for McLaren, we're currently seeing the biggest drop off in the first couple of races of the season, and whenever a situation like this happens at McLaren, one question pops off, will Norris leave? That's what Andreas Seidel did once he understood that the project McLaren has set isn't one that he believes in, and frankly, we don't see any reason why Norris wouldn't follow his steps. Although one thing that was mentioned by Zach Brown has probably denied all of the rumors that Norris would leave the team after the end of the 2023 season, and that's his contractual situation with the Woking Bay squad. The 23-year-old, according to his team boss, doesn't have an exit clause in his contract, meaning that he's currently heavily working on building a championship winning car with McLaren, at least if we were to believe Zach Brown. When talking about this matter, Zach Brown added, he has zero exit clauses, 
Ultimately, when his contract is next up, if we're not performing and he doesn't feel he can win races and can compete for the championship, then I think anybody, driver or team member for that matter, would be considering leaving. We're all here to win. He's got a contract with us and most importantly, he's very happy here and he sees the progress that we're making and he's a team player. So even contracts aside, it's about that he's in a happy environment. He's along for the journey and we've got some time to prove to him that we're going to give him a car capable of winning. But on the other hand, Brown has also praised Piastri and went on to say that the young rookie is definitely what Norris needs in terms of becoming an even better driver. Having two seasons with a driver that isn't feeling the car as he should as your teammate could make you a bit sloppy, which is why Piastri's performance has definitely raised some eyebrows in McLaren, especially in Norris. McLaren is now enduring some tough changes, ones that may be difficult to understand from our perspective, but also ones that could see the team improving a lot in the remainder of the 2023 campaign. The entire leadership of the team has changed, and now McLaren doesn't have a technical director, with this role belonging to James Key. Apart from him, there were an array of firings of people that didn't perform, according to Norris. So when you have a squad of people that don't do the job that they're hired to do, then the most logical thing would be to fire them. When talking about this matter, Norris added, I'm thankful I'm not in that position. It's a very tough job to be in. But yeah, I guess everyone has to make a decision at some point. Zach has bosses too. It's a business at the end of the day, what's best for the business and not just what looks the nicest. Sometimes you have to be a bit more cold-hearted. It happens in every team. It happens at McLaren. You always want better people and you try to get rid of the people who are maybe not performing to the level that you need. Now, McLaren can brag about the fact that Peter Padromu is the technical director of aerodynamics, while David Sanchez is the loudest name that is coming to the team as the former Ferrari senior technical figure is now McLaren's technical director of car concept and performance. All of these changes were labelled as more than necessary, given the fact that the team has the youngest duo of drivers that needs to be pleased in every way possible. But is this enough? Zach Brown is very fearful that Lando Norris will leave the team, especially with interesting and looming positions at Red Bull, Ferrari and Mercedes opening soon. Norris has said that the rumours don't affect him at this point anymore, and it's evident that people are making up fake stories at this point of his dissatisfaction with McLaren. But that doesn't mean he isn't looking at all of the options that may become available to him sooner rather than later. And we mustn't forget where his former team principal went. Audi. This is a team that is looking to enter the sport on a big stage, and if they want to make a statement from day one, they would definitely need a driver of Norris's caliber. Keep in mind that Norris and Seidel were very close in McLaren, and the fact that Seidel left the team after his statement to believe in the long-term project of the squad has only fueled the rumors about Norris following him to the same destination. There's a lot of talk about Norris, but at this point we'd like to conclude this video with a question to you guys. Where do you think he'd go next? Do you think that he's buying the long-term game with McLaren? Or do you think that he's had enough and he'll go to a championship winning team like Red Bull or Ferrari or maybe even Mercedes? Let us know in the comments down below.